I broke down and questioned my sanity, but in the end, I felt nothing but contempt, and also a little schadenfreude. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. To feel vengeful after suffering infidelity is human, but to savor schadenfreude, is devilish. Just like in the first story, how an evil stepmother thrives on watching the world burn around her victims, because they all shared blame for protecting their unfaithful cheating father. Followed by a heartbreaking innocent girl being betrayed by her cheating two-faced boyfriend. Lastly, a boyfriend finds a unique way to get back at his cheating girlfriend. Helping her to prepare for an exam, with made-up textbooks. Before we start, be sure to sabotage your skateboard before handing it to the like button, and let him go down the ramp. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. A fair warning, this story stretches out over a period of more than a decade, so try to bear with me. For some backstory, I came from your average nuclear family. I had a mom and dad who hated each other and seemed to spend their whole marriage talking about divorce. An older sister whom I did not get along with, but as time went on would not only become my best friend, but also kind of my hero and me, the youngest, 14 years old when this all started. Very relevant to the story, my dad, until losing his job only a few months ago, worked overseas most of my life and was only home five months of the year. Our tale begins with my mother succumbing from her long battle with cancer, she had been hospitalized for quite some time and I will admit, those last few months, I had given up completely. I had hardly gone to see her, I just could not bring myself to see her rotting away in that hospital bed. My dad, hadn't been much better than me and the hero of this story was my sister, the one who had never gotten along with my mother, who held her hand until the very end. None of this is vital to the story. But it was the point where my sister not only won my respect, but also became the one person whom I would grow to trust more than any other. My dad. Not so much, in fact, his life had hardly changed at all and my mum's ashes had hardly been released, and he was overseas again, leaving me and my sister behind. Also worth mentioning that at this time, my sister was no longer living at home, but was living with her fiancé. He later cheated on her. She broke the engagement and he will therefore not feature in this story. So all the pieces are set in place, my mom passing away, my dad's overseas and my sister is living elsewhere, leaving me, a 14-year-old kid living alone in what, until recently, was our family home. Soon after I got a tenant to take one of the rooms and that rent money paid for all my living expenses. Now, as I mentioned, my dad was out of the country only seven months of the year, which meant he was home for five of them, or so you'd expect. The truth is, he wasn't. My dad was a skirt chaser and even in those five months, I hardly ever saw him as he'd be out staying with whatever he was hooking up at that time. I could write about a thousand more stories about the woman he dated in that time, but as none of them have relevance to this story, therefore I'm skipping forward four years and the introduction to evil stepmother. It is worth mentioning that when she and my dad started dating, he was actually already engaged to someone else, whom kinda just disappeared from the story as if she was never in his life, to begin with. Evil stepmother was the wife of a deceased politician, I've never been able to figure out how much exactly he left her, but my estimate is somewhere between 15 and 20 million. Although neither my sister or I had any interest in money, her financial status was something of a relief, as my dad was pretty well off himself, so at the very least, we knew she wasn't another gold digger. So actually, when I first met her, she was lovely, polite, a good sense of humor, overall just a nice person to be around, and I was truly happy that my dad had finally found somebody who could make him happy. Skip forward another year, my sister was now engaged to a new guy and was starting to plan her wedding. My sister, being the angel that she is, even with a multi-millionaire father, never asked him to contribute a single penny to the wedding. What did she ask him? for him and evil stepmother to attend. He was her dad after all, please note, even though I'm calling her evil stepmother, she wasn't officially our stepmother yet at this point. She had given the date to evil stepmother, who had kinda, brushed it off and said they would try to attend, but they couldn't make any promises, because it might interfere with their holiday plans. 
my sister was understandably distraught and, ultimately, just called off the wedding and would end up taking their vows in front of a judge. So a few weeks after evil stepmother had broken my sister's heart, she and my dad were traveling to God knows where, and my sister and I were at the movies. We both get the same text from evil stepmother, it went, something like this, hello, I wanted you to be the first to know that your father has asked me to become his wife and I have accepted, I forget what the rest said, travel fast forward. To the day that my sister's wedding would have taken place and we both get an invite to evil stepmother's house, my dad had long since moved in with her. I had a bad feeling about this, but thought to myself that no one can possibly be so unnecessarily cruel. But if people weren't, then I would not be writing this story. So, you guessed it, evil stepmother had stolen my sister's wedding date and had married our dad that morning, the invite we had received was to their wedding reception. There's going to be a massive time jump now, but before I do, I just want to emphasize some of the highlights of my dad and evil stepmother's first marriage, yes, you heard that right. These included, a house rule which strictly forbid me or my sister ever mentioning our deceased mother, me making the grave sin of turning 21. Please note, at no point did I ask my father to cut their vacation short to celebrate this with me, but he decided to come to surprise me and come home a day earlier to do so. The next five years, and I'm not making that up, every single time evil stepmother saw me, she would berate me for how my birthday screwed up their vacation. Her and my dad, showing up at the family house while I was at work, taking the family dogs and giving them away without so much as consulting me. To top it all off, she would constantly try and play my sister and me up against each other, always cornering one of us and telling us what a waste of space the other was. So skip forward about another year, I had now been the landlord of the family house for about seven years, I was now renting out to several tenants and using that money to rent the house from my dad. The rest I used to upkeep the place as well as I possibly could, basically, even though his name was still on the deed, it was pretty much accepted that the house was now mine and would officially become mine when my dad passes. The place was beyond sentimental to me. And then one afternoon, he shows up with a car full of things declaring that he has left evil stepmother and was moving back in with me. Oh joy! Following this, it took less than a month for all my tenants to break their contracts and move out, yes, he really was that difficult to live with. The month ended and he went back overseas, leaving me with an empty house and somehow still expecting me to pay him for that month's rent. Sorry dad, you kinda screwed that up for yourself. He returned six weeks later and fell back into his old patterns, never coming home, hooking up with any woman that looked at him. And then, somehow, getting back together with the fiancé he had left for evil stepmother. His divorce from evil stepmother had already been finalized by this point. And then, almost as if I was 18 years old again, he once again left that same fiancé for evil stepmother. At some point they got remarried, I honestly don't even remember when. So let's get to the main part of this story, yes, I haven't even touched it yet. A secret about my dad, I love him dearly, but he is a freaking bastard. I would learn this the hard way as I would become a pawn in his numerous affairs. He went so far as to send some of these women to stay in the family house with me and then invite me over to have dinner with him and evil stepmother, forcing me to fake smile while the woman he was cheating with was literally hiding at my house. This went on for years. Both I and my sister knew about it, both of us had begged him to stop and he just did not give two hex. Wow, it's taking a lot out of me not to use curse words as I relive this period. Also, during this period, my sister had given birth to a beautiful baby girl. Even though my dad and evil stepmother had already been having marital problems at that time, again, he had shown up with her at the hospital and introduced her as grandma. In the years that followed, this gorgeous little one would actually bring my sister and evil stepmother quite close together, which makes this all the more tragic. Flash forward several more years, I'm 30 now and going through a very tough time in my life. I had lost my own fiancé, in part due to my family shunning both of us and ultimately forcing me to choose between them and her. This basically happened every single time I got a girlfriend. My business had hit a streak of insanely bad luck and was hanging on by a thread, I had lost all my savings trying to save my beautiful dog from a rare blood disease, she died a month later anyway, I had been falsely accused of assault, basically, 
I was closer to suicidal than I ever imagined possible. And to top that all off, my dad left evil stepmother once more and moved back in with me. To make matters even worse, he wasn't doing so alone. No, he brought with him his Asian mistress, a lady that could not speak a word of English and they were literally communicating with each other via Google Translate. The whole situation was pretty messed up. Just to keep the timeline straight, he had left her before going back to work overseas, and had warned me beforehand, that he would be moving back in with me upon his return, at no point had he mentioned his Asian mistress. Also slightly relevant, the day he came back was the 24th of December. At this time, evil stepmother was on the verge of her own mental breakdown and was calling my sister day and night, trying to learn why my dad had left her. This went on for the entire time that my dad was overseas and continued when he came back. My sister was calling me in tears saying she could not keep this secret anymore, she had grown fond of evil stepmother and knew the only way to release her was to tell her about the affairs, there had been eight that we knew of. I, on the other hand, had never grown to like evil stepmother, but even I had always been disgusted by our father's behavior and never saw any justification in what he had been doing to her. Ultimately, I told my sister to just tell her, that would be the biggest mistake of my life. You see, learning of my dad's betrayal had given evil stepmother a new purpose in life. She wasn't only going to get revenge on my dad, she was going to get revenge on everyone that was involved. Her first mission was finding out who the woman was that was currently staying with him, to find out, she turned to me. Now. Side note here, I had been so angry at my dad for this whole situation that I hadn't even been back to my house since he had moved back in. I had spent about three days, including Christmas, just driving around aimlessly, I had slept in my car for those nights, I was done being his accomplice. Therefore, when evil stepmother asked me who the woman was, I happily told her. There was just one problem with this, my dad had foreseen me turning on him and given me the wrong information. Therefore, in the eyes of evil stepmother, I had purposefully sent her on a wild goose chase. Following this, my dad had sent me a message that I was no longer his son. The woman had actually been a masseuse at a massage parlor that both my dad and evil stepmother had often frequented, less than a kilometer away from their home. To this day, I don't know how evil stepmother found this out, but she showed up at the massage parlor and started screaming and threatening to sue. She also started following my dad's mistress around. What happened next, she refuses to admit was her doing, but a few days later, someone sent naked photos of my dad's mistress to her boss and she was subsequently fired. My dad, in the meantime, had grown bored with her as well, and had started to rebuild his marriage with evil stepmother. This was unbeknownst to both me and my sister, and made even less sense when their second divorce finalized. My dad's mistress, around this time, also completely vanished off the face of the earth. Did I mention that evil stepmother liked to brag about the mob connections she had left from her deceased husband's time in politics and had openly told us how they could make people just completely disappear? Cut forward a few months later, I hadn't seen my dad in months and still had no idea that he and evil stepmother had gotten back together. I found this out when his Facebook relationship status changed too, married to evil stepmother, followed by their wedding pictures. This was kind of a shock to me, but the biggest one was still to come. I was still in financial difficulty, following my recent streak of bad luck, and then I got a text. I forget what the exact wording was but it basically came down to the fact that evil stepmother no longer felt comfortable living in their old place, knowing that he had met his mistress so close to there. So he was taking back the family home and I was going to have to evict all my tenants and move out myself. At that point, I had been living in that house for 19 years and had been the acting landlord for 16 of those. To add fuel to the fire, I also learned that evil stepmother was having the old house demolished and building a new place on top of it. I was shattered, that place had meant more to me than anything else in this world and she was coming in with, bulldozers to destroy it. To make up for my sudden eviction, they had however, taken the liberty of already finding me a new place to live that they knew would be in my budget. They took me there a few days later, this place was terrifying, it was the kind of place where you'd get shot in the face if you left your home after dark. To make matters worse, they were right, it was literally the only place I could afford at that point and on such short notice. 
Dad of the year and evil stepmother had left me to pack up the entire house, including everything left from my mother. The shoebox I was moving to obviously didn't have space for any of these things, so most of it ended up on the sidewalk. To evil stepmother this was joyful schadenfreude, as she had always had an unnatural hate towards my deceased mother, whom she had never met, and had died before she met my father. She would go so far as to destroy every single thing that held any memory of my mother, even cutting down our family tree and, quite literally, turning it into firewood. Taking my mother's wedding ring, that had been left to my sister to hold for safekeeping, only to quite literally throw it away and deny ever having it. That was her revenge on me. My sister, she had other plans for, you see, once my sister had exposed my father's affair to her, she had wasted no time in revealing to him that my sister had sold him out. My dad, being the self-entitled person that he is, still was unable to see that he had been in the wrong here. And basically had not spoken to my sister since. He had not only stopped speaking to her, but had also stopped talking to his granddaughter. Both him and evil stepmother had been quite active in her life for the first few years and now both had written her off completely. As I write this, two years after my sister had exposed my dad, he has not spoken to or even asked about his granddaughter once. I had confronted him about this on several occasions, but he kinda just shrugged me off and told me that I have not once taken into account how hard these last two years have been on him. It also turned out later, that evil stepmother was monitoring his phone and I'm pretty sure she had been deleting any messages that my sister had tried sending to him. About this all being hard on him, he was right, you see even though my dad may have brought all of this upon himself, I do feel truly sorry for him. Evil stepmother had taken away from all of us what she deemed most important to us, with me it was my house and all my memories, with my sister it was her relationship with her father and her and with my father, it was his freedom. She had taken away all forms of privacy and freedom he had left. She had taken control of his bank accounts, taken to monitoring his incoming messages, deleted all his friends from his Facebook account and lost him his job. The new house they built even had an open bathroom that you could literally not pee in private. It was disturbing and honestly, very hard to witness. This story doesn't really have an ending, my sister has finally stopped trying to make up with my dad, the few times I have seen him have been under strict supervision from evil stepmother, that usually ends with her fighting me and telling me what a stain I am on his life. Recently, my niece turned six. My sister would have loved it if he called to congratulate, but he texted her his life was too hectic for this, and he'll be able to in about nine months. That's where my sister wrote him off, and I don't blame her. I guess I still want them to make amends, but I cannot ask my sister to try again. Although I never saw my dad as any kind of saint, he was always my dad and I always loved him, still do, but the man he is now is no longer a man, he is a prisoner. Evil stepmother has turned him into a real-life version of Theon Greyjoy and for the life he is living now, I feel nothing but sadness. At the moment, I'm happily living elsewhere and he is happily traveling the world with evil stepmother, our current relationship is the occasional text message and maybe a visit when he happens to be in the country. I'm not aiming to get revenge. I already got nuclear revenge on someone, but that's another story. It left me empty, and in the end nothing was achieved. I have no intention of doing anything like that again. I worked as a front desk agent in a large luxury hotel chain for some years. One particular hotel I worked at was located really close to the downtown area. So we got a large number of young, very wealthy, business people who loved to party. I usually worked the second and third shifts, which meant I got to see loads of drunken hookups, breakups, cheating, sexy time for cash and more. This particular one though. This is one I'm about to share, I will never forget. I was working at the desk when a group of young, well-dressed men come walking in. They've all clearly been drinking, but aren't so drunk that they can't walk right and hold a conversation. One of them comes up to me and tells me that while he and his friends were at the bar, a woman was hitting on him, and even though he told her no multiple times, she wouldn't stop. So he and his friends left, and it wasn't until they got in the Uber that he realized he didn't have his room key anymore. He thinks she took it and he's concerned that she may come up to his room. He asked that I deactivate his keys and if she does come up to the hotel, to not let her in. 
when he was telling me all of this, it didn't sit right with me. He and his friends were all grinning about it and snickering amongst one another. Then he gave a clear description of her, without being asked. Told me height, body shape, hair color and style, the kind of dress she was wearing. All while saying it in a mocking tone. Now, this could have easily been because he thought the whole thing was ridiculous or was too drunk to take it seriously, but it really didn't sound right to me. Either way, I did as I was trained in that situation. I pulled up his reservation, deactivated the keys as requested, made him a new set when he showed me his ID, and even offered to move him to a new room if that would make him feel more comfortable. He and his buddies all laughed a little at that and he declined, took the keys and they went to their room. About an hour or so later, the woman he described showed up. By this point, my relief for the night had also shown up and was sitting at the front desk, while I was in the back office counting down my cash drawer. I hadn't had a chance to tell him about the woman. Just as I'm walking out of the back office with my bag and about to leave, I see my coworker buzz the doors open and the woman comes rushing in, cuts through the lobby and down the hall to the elevators. She was barefoot, holding her heels in her hands, and knew exactly where she was going. I rushed up to him and told him what the man from before had told me about her. My coworker looked at me confused. He then pointed to the screen that had the reservation pulled up and told me that when the woman arrived, she went to use the room keys and they didn't work. So he asked for her room number and last name. She gave both and her name is on the reservation. I looked at the reservation and down in the notes, there was a woman's name listed. The man from before was listed as the primary, but her name was listed as secondary with his consent to be in the room. I was confused, I thought maybe she wasn't the same woman he was talking about. But, to be on the safe side, I called the man in his room and told him about the situation. That we allowed a woman, fitting that description he gave, to enter the building because she confirmed her name was on the room. He laughed, said he forgot her name was on the room and asked that I remove it. This made me super confused, I asked to make sure. Sir, just to be clear, the woman you met at the bar tonight was with you at check-in hours ago, and was allowed keys then, but now she is not. He yelled in the background while laughing, Aw oh guys, I confused the poor girl. He then gets back on the phone with me saying, Yes yeah, sweetheart, she's banned from the room. Don't worry about the other details, just take her name off. I replied, I see, if she isn't going to be in the room anymore, would you like us to call the police and have her removed from the property? He replied with, Whoa, that's too far there. Don't worry, she'll get the hint soon enough. We ended the call there and I got really suspicious. I told my coworker to not do anything and that I was going to stick around for a bit to see if anything happened. A short time later, the woman came off the elevator, pouring tears, sobbing while on the phone with someone. She sat down in our lobby and my coworker and I tried to look busy while eavesdropping on her phone call. She was sobbing on the phone to her mom and sister. From what she told them, she was invited out to spend the week with her boyfriend, meeting all of his old college buddies. This being their first night, they all met up for dinner and drinks. After a bit, she went to the restroom and when she came back she caught her boyfriend hitting on another woman. His friends all bet that he wouldn't do it. When she confronted him pissed off, he called her a bunch of names and humiliated her in front of his friends and the entire bar. All of his friends joined in on mocking her and he threw in her face that she was, nothing without him and dumped her right there. He and his friends then took an Uber back and left her stranded at the bar with no money and no way back. She then had to use her phone's GPS and walk back to the hotel from the bar, barefoot, she had heels, and walking two miles in those was not going to cut it. She was asking her mom and sister for help, as he wouldn't let her in the room to get her luggage or her wallet. My heart broke. I felt horrible. I helped this guy treat this poor woman like crap and now he and all his friends were up there laughing at her, while she's sitting in our lobby sobbing with nothing. I went over to our snack area in the lobby, grabbed her a bottled water, and brought it to her. I told her that I couldn't help but overhear the conversation and was very sorry for her situation, I asked if she would like us to help. I informed her that if he was keeping her from getting to her things, we could call the police and have them force him to hand over her things, 
so she could leave if she'd like. Or if she wanted to let her mom or sister pay for a room, we'd be happy to give her a very low rate room far from him. She thanked me, took the water, tried to calm down and talk to me about what was happening and what her options were. Eventually, we decided on her staying in the hotel for the night and figuring out the rest in the morning. As we make it to the desk, she asks me to try and run her credit card to see if it has enough on it for another room. I ask her what she means by another room and she tells me that she's actually paying for the room he's in. That his name is on the room because he booked it, but it's her card paying for everything. This intrigued me. I asked why she was paying for the room if it was in his name. She told me that she's the one with a job, not him. That he hasn't been able to find a job in his field since graduating from college and is essentially living off of his parents' money. But just after they started dating, his parents cut him off, so he's been living off of her money. That's why she was so upset and confused by how he had been acting all night, he was sweet and doing everything for her back home, but since he met up with his friends, he did a 180 and hasn't been the same guy the entire time. I wanted to tell her that it was obvious that he was using her for the money, and that he would probably blame his friends for all of this and try to get back with her later on. But I doubted she would have listened to me or cared for a complete stranger to butt in on her personal life like that. So instead, I offered up a sweet piece of revenge. I informed her that, considering she's the one paying for the room, if she can confirm that it is her card on file with some sort of photo ID and verify the last four digits of the card number, that's honestly all this hotel company required, then she could, if she wanted to, kick him out of the room and keep it all to herself. But, considering how poorly her night has been, if she were indeed able to prove she is the one paying for the room, then I'd be more than happy to provide her with the biggest luxury upgrade we offered at our property. Largest suite we had, full hotel amenity access, I'd even have my coworker fish out a bottle of champagne and some fresh strawberries for her to have sent to her room. All free of charge. She was taken aback by the offer and was very sincerely tempted, she looked like she was about to say no. Then I told her that since she would be upgrading her room, that would require moving her things from that room and into her new one. Which meant the room that she is currently listed in would need to be vacated immediately, if anyone were to remain in the room after we have demanded it be vacated, we are required to have them escorted off the property or they pay for the room. Their choice. She then thought about it, pulled up her card's banking app and showed me the screen. It had a photo of her, her full name, the card's full number, and the hold from our hotel for the room. She asked if that worked. It was good enough for me. I quickly upgraded her, moved everything over in the system and before I could say a word to my coworker, he was already grabbing a set of master keys, a bell card and was asking her what her luggage looked like, since he would be the one retrieving it for her to deliver to her room. He didn't want her to have to deal with her ex again. She smiled and told him which ones were hers and that she hadn't unpacked yet. My coworker runs down to the elevators and up to fetch her things. While I make her a new set of keys and send her off to her new room. Once she's on the elevator, my phone at the desk starts ringing. It's the ex-boyfriend and he's very angry about why my coworker has entered the room and is taking her things. I calmly explain that I cannot give out the private information of any of our guests. I added, if he would like to remain in his room, he would need to pay for it, as there is no longer a method of payment on his room. He, blue, up. He's making a ton of demands trough the phone while yelling at my coworker to stop what he's doing, but it's obvious from the way he's yelling at him, that my coworker isn't listening. I can even hear the guy's friends telling him to chill out and just pay for the room. I proceed to explain that we will give him a courtesy of 10 minutes to make a decision. At which point, if he doesn't have payment ready, he must vacate the building or we will be forced to call the authorities and have him evicted. He continues to yell at me. He screams, swears, threatens, and yells for a solid minute before taking a breath. I then tell him he has 9 minutes remaining and asks if he has come to a decision yet. He hangs up on me. 9 minutes later, I call the room and he doesn't answer. I call again, no answer. I call a third time, he picks up, but immediately hangs up. I call the police, tell them what's going on and they said they're on their way. The officers arrive, 
I tell them what's going on. We go up to the room together and the man and his friends are all white as ghosts when they see the cops. The cops explain to the ex-boyfriend and his friends that they're being evicted. The ex-BF starts trying to talk to me, but the cops stop him and tell him to only talk to them. I told him about his attitude on the phone before. The friends are all offering to pay for the room at this point and the cops look to me and ask if that would be acceptable. I smile very sweetly and plainly say, no. The cops nod and start rushing all of the guys to grab their things and leave the room. The ex-BF is the last one out the door carrying his two bags, even started complaining that he isn't even given a luggage card and has to carry his own things. His friends all look pissed at him. I go with the officers to escort all of them out of the building and run into my co-worker in the lobby. He waits until they're all outside in the parking lot to tell me that the woman is in her new room. She loves it, but said no to the champagne, she just wanted to sleep. I didn't get to see her before she left town the next day. But the ex-BF did try calling our hotel to complain a number of times. He even tried leaving some bad reviews online and lied through all of it. I hope she doesn't have to ever deal with him again. I'm a 19 year old male, my girlfriend at that time was 18. We have been together for more than a year. We were in the same class during middle school and high school now, a two year friendship eventually evolved into a relationship, y'all know how it is. We were happily together, at least so I thought, since December 2019. I thought everything was great between us the whole time, although recently, about March, I noticed her becoming very distant and barely writing first, dry texting, etc. I asked her multiple times if everything was okay, and gave her some space, but it continued for the next few months. I was naturally very upset, as I've been through hell and back together with her when she was going through depression and a really hard time at the end of 2020. It suddenly felt like all this time was wasted and worth nothing. I, as a naive high schooler, truly believed that she was the one, it seemed serious after all. We matched perfectly together, we spent about three full months crying together at night when she was going through a rough time. We had similar plans for the future, similar interests and it seemed we were meant for each other. My GF, let's call her Caroline, was studying to become a lawyer so she was mostly into humanity subjects. I on the other hand, am studying biochem, for medical school, I apologize if this is all confusing, we live in Europe. She was required to attend at least one science subject to graduate, physics, biology, chemistry or psychology, she always hated these subjects and just took them because they were necessary to graduate. She ended up picking chemistry as I was a natural and tutored 9 and 10 graders chemistry in my free time, so I always helped her with assignments. It started as helping her before exams and assignments, so she could get a good pass grade. After her being in a rough time, I helped writing half of the assignments for her. After a while she started to become more affectionate again. Anyways, enough backstory. After noticing Caroline started to get distant and she never properly answered my questions regarding her behavior. I wanted to see how far it would go. For one week, I didn't invite her, call her, text her first. In a total of one week, she called me three times. Twice to ask me about her assignment and once telling me how she felt insecure and bad. I'm not a prick, I helped her out with her school stuff and comforted her when she felt down. Me being the naive love is perfect lovebird, chalked it up to her feeling depressed again, but feeling embarrassed about it. I continued helping and comforting her for the next month, until nothing changed and she never opened up anymore. I was honestly doubting everything by then, is it me, what am I doing wrong etc. I tried everything I could, eventually, I asked her friends if something happened, but they said she was the same as always towards them. I knew something was up, but I didn't know what it was yet. One day she came over to my place, it was only the second time she did that in March, Usually she came at least twice a week. We were sitting in my room, talking while trying out a new video game. After she went to my kitchen to make herself something, I hear a notification from her phone. I'm usually not a snooper, but I had a quick look at her screen that lit up, I wouldn't be able to read the message or who it was anyway. It was a Discord notification, I was very surprised, I knew for a fact that she didn't have it a month ago. 
Plus she only plays Minecraft once in a while, she never uses Discord or anything. So the next morning I did some snooping and sure enough, I found a whole other Instagram account of hers where she branded herself to be an aesthetic gamer girl, not that there is anything wrong with that. She had never told me anything about this, I couldn't find any of her friends following her on that account either. Sure enough, she had her Discord username in her bio. Curious and pricky me decided it would be a good idea to create a throwaway account, and try to text her to see what she was all about. Before you complain to me, I know I was being a prick here. After texting her on my new account, we talked for a bit until she became flirty, we only played a few games together. I kinda broke down and started questioning my sanity. I had been with her all this time and through so much crap, I couldn't believe she would do this to me. After the sadness came the anger, I wanted to know how far she would take it. I found it hard to believe that she would just casually flirt with guys like this. After setting up my first recon mission plan I found out more about her, until I found out about her supposed boyfriend. At that point I had a huge emotional breakdown. I felt I've wasted so much time helping someone who would betray me like this, from her stories I would later find out they were sleeping with each other for a whole month by now, about when her behavior started to change. At this point I started hatching my revenge plan. I know I would not let her off the hook this easily. I spent two weeks pulling all-nighters making sure I had all my work done till the end of the year, until graduation. I spent all my remaining time creating fake chemistry textbook pages, so I could make my revenge more believable. All of the information was wrong, I knew I had to the give her a taste of her own medicine, betray her like she had me. For the remaining two months of the school year, I fed her all this fake information and made sure she got all of her assignments wrong. I knew she wouldn't be able to tell anyone she was copying off me, as our high school had a very strict rule for plagiarism, cheating attempts on small exams could get you expelled. So after letting the pot stew for those two painful, awful months I let the doo-doo hit the fan. As our teacher had to handle an outrageous amount of classes, she always checked our assignments late, often by two or three months all at once. I knew I could use this fact to my advantage. After she submitted her final assignments that were worth a huge percentage of our final graduation grade, I told her I knew about her shenanigans that had been still ongoing for three entire months by now. I told her how she hurt me and how it will come back to haunt her, I made sure of that. She mostly brushed me off, acted as if I were the villain, as I couldn't just leave her and that she was only friends with that guy. Although I told her something was going to happen, I never told her what it would be, trust me, she never saw it coming. One week later, the end of year results rolled around, when we received our final grades, I was over the moon as I passed with flying colors. On the other hand, her not so much. Due to her final assignments and all quarter four work equaling to an F, she called me crying and asked for help. She told me she wouldn't be able to graduate if she wouldn't receive at least a passing grade for this year. She told me our teacher gave her a final chance, after telling her how disappointed she was. Caroline has two two more months at school with extra one-on-one -on -one online lessons with our saint teacher. Honestly, props go out to our teacher for giving her another chance. To be honest, I felt really bad for her and her situation. Knowing very well, if she didn't work her butt off in these two months, in a subject she hated, she would have to repeat the last year, without someone constantly helping her with her chem. That compassion quickly went away when I told her I would help her, but only if she apologized and paid me my regular tutoring fees. Caroline went full-on ballistic after that and screamed at me, how I could do this to her. I hung up and she called me a few seconds after, apologizing and agreeing to pay me for my help. She now has two months of intense memorizing with her ex if she wants to graduate. Thank you for enjoying this episode which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.